let it rain. Jesus is coming again. I'm going home. <laughs> Good morning, brothers and sisters, and a special warm welcome to our visitors. It is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are doing something different today. We are collaborating with ambassadors and young nations from Johannesburg in the TLC conference. We would like to welcome them with the verse Deuteronomy 28 verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on to you and overtake you, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. With this being said, I would love I would love to welcome our three speakers. Our first speaker is JJ from Calvin. Our second speaker is Choniso from Kabiga. And our third speaker is Nathan from Calvin. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today I'll be discussing the first angel's message. What is the first angel's message, you may ask? The first angel's message can be found in Revelations 14, verse 6 and 7, which reads as follows. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who has made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. The first angel's message is, is, is same and simple, saving God's message, but it puts this in a new setting this time, a worldwide one. It's more focused on the people who are living in the end times, which is us, before the second coming of Christ. This last message calls on people, or God's people, to fear God and give glory to Him. The everlasting gospel. God's people do not proclaim a new message to the world. They share the gospel message of salvation, which has never changed. Hence, it's called the everlasting gospel. Even though God may have a special message in the last days, we must always be careful and never de-emphasize or distort the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who are part of God's church in the last days of the second coming should demonstrate a godly-like godly -like characteristic, showing love, kindness, and just being like Jesus Christ in general. This will obviously make you stand out in the last days because we're living in a time where everyone's more or less the same doing bad things, having bad thoughts, but that's part of being human. But now us as God's people, we need to stand out, especially in the last days, which is a more difficult time to ever stand out because things are changing rapidly, very fast. A call to worship. This message calls us to worship him who made the heavens and the earth. God asks us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Because in the six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Guys, this is a simple message and a simple warning to God's people. That he is coming very soon. And we should foresee his second coming and wait. But whilst we wait, we need to collect as many people as possible. And stand out and show godly like characters through us just by living people should see that this person is different just by the way we talk the way we walk the way we dress we need to show god through everything we do thank you i'll be reading from revelation 14 verse 8 and a second angel followed the first one saying she has fallen great babylon has fallen she made all people drink her wine, the strong wine of her immoral life. Modern Babylon is represented by one of the biggest distractions a Christian teenager could ever think of, or use, social media. Social media has made many so intoxicated. It has made them intoxicated 
they can't even differentiate between good and bad. One wise person once said, people don't know how to react anymore. They laugh at, they laugh at things they are supposed to be pitying. Mm. It has been estimated that 3.1 billion people are using social media and it will rise to 4.4 billion in 2025. This has made social media one of the playgrounds of Satan and his servants. WhatsApp, Instagram, and one of the most popular sites towards teenagers nowadays, TikTok, can fall under the category social media. Once I was watching a Christian video on TikTok, the comments I saw there surprised me. One of the comments that surprised me the most was of a girl saying she had a crush on Satan and was asking what she must do. I told her to pray, but then what she replied to me later on shocked me the most. She told me she will pray to Lucifer so that he notices her feelings. I didn't know what else to do, so I sent the message to one of our ambassador directors. And she said that I must pray for her and not speak to her because you never know, it might be a demon speaking through her. In order for us not to be overcome by the desires of this world, we must keep Jesus in our heart. There's a story that I once heard on YouTube. There was a peaceful girl. Her teacher asked her, where does Jesus live? She said, he lives in our heart. And then the teacher asked her, what do you do when Satan comes knocking? And then she said, she'll, wait, she'll tell Jesus to open the door for her. So I'm asking you guys, can you please let Jesus open the door for you? Because Satan has lived for more than a thousand years. He knows your each and every desire, and he knows what to throw at you so that you fall. Thank you. And it says, And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup 
of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And their smoke and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and thy no rest day nor night. And who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I think these few verses are very clear and self-explanatory, as most of the Bible is. This is a very clear warning. And I can guarantee you that this is one of the most important warnings in the Bible. Let's break it down. It clearly states that anyone who receives the mark of the beast on his forehead, on his forehead, or on his hand, or who worships the beast, shall meet the wrath of God. Do you want to meet the wrath of God? Could the warning ever be clearer? I don't know. But what is important is that you acknowledge that you have been warned way beforehand. But for those of us who keep the commandments of God and are faithful in Jesus, we all know that we shall be very well rewarded and bear the fruits of our patience. May the Lord Jesus bless the reading of his word. Thank you. There's nothing unusual about the Adventist Church being involved in mission. Mission has always been our focus, but there is something very unusual about a new mission movement taking off in Tokyo. The church in Japan has a burden for the millions of unreached people living in their capital city. They know that without new mission methods, these people will remain unreached. So they invited the General Conference and the Northern Asia Pacific Division to partner with them to create Mission Unusual, a massive church planting and disciple making movement. Key to the development of Mission Unusual are the global mission centers, which focus on creating resources to share the gospel with unreached people groups. Today I'm in Tokyo, one of the world's largest cities. With a population of 40 million, the challenge is great before us. But guess what? Our God is greater. He has given us this mandate in Revelation 14, 6 and other places in Scripture to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So how are we doing? Well, we're not home yet. And that's where we as an Adventist family worldwide can focus on reaching the unreached people groups of the city. There's growing diversity in Japan, and the people embrace a variety of lifestyles and subcultures. This includes young people like Sunny Bunny, who use fashion as a form of self-expression. The team of church planting missionaries is already on the ground, learning the language and how best to share Jesus with the Japanese. In time, they'll start new groups of believers who will in turn disciple others. Eventually, they'll be supported by the ministry of global mission pioneers, urban centers of influence, volunteers, and tent makers in a concerted effort to reach the entire city for Jesus. Helping to lead this team is Pastor Nozomu Obara, the president of the East Japan Conference. 
For years, he's had a passion for church planting, and he and his wife Sachiko are actively engaged in a disciple-making ministry for children. Pastor Obara will be transitioning from his position as president to become the associate director for Mission Unusual Tokyo. Greater Tokyo area is a big area with over 40 million people. But in the heart of Tokyo City, there's about 10 million people and only 10 Adventist churches with about 900 worship attendees every week. So one Adventist needs to reach more than 10,000 people. Tokyo is a big challenge. To confront the challenge, Japanese pastors and missionaries will use a holistic approach to mission. Mission Unusual will plant the seeds of mission over the next five years. But the mission won't stop there. These efforts will continue to grow and impact people's lives for years to come. Our focus is not just on events and programs. Building relationships and getting involved with people is our focus. Finding out people's needs and meeting people's needs. In other words, implementing Christ's method here in Mission Unusual Tokyo. We'll keep you updated as God leads this movement and uses it for His glory. In the meantime, you too can support Mission Unusual Tokyo. Will you join me in praying for this project as it continues to unfold over the next five years to uplift Jesus in this city? Nina does what most dog owners do. She takes her dog out for a walk every day to enjoy the outside air. But things are a little different for Nina. She relies on Fargo to get her out the door and around the neighborhood safely. He's her guide dog, helping Nina navigate the streets. Nina and her husband, Kevin, are both blind, living in a Toronto high-rise apartment building. This Canadian couple lives in many ways just like anyone else would. They cook, clean, and do household tasks. Nina runs an online business, selling handmade knitted clothing, homemade soaps, and other accessories. Each of these things are an artistic outlet for me. I do the store because I like to have fun with crafts. Nina and Kevin met at Camp Frenda, an Adventist summer camp that opens its doors to the blind community for one week each year. It was sponsored by Christian Record Services at the time. Nina and Kevin's love for Jesus grew, and they both were baptized. During the same time, they fell in love and eventually got married. Despite becoming part of a church family, the reality of their daily challenges still exist. I think a lot of people just don't know how to relate to us, and a lot of people are afraid to even talk to us, and so sometimes they just don't know how to approach us as, as people. and. Uh, a lot of times we feel left out. In 2007, they were part of the founding team to start a new Adventist congregation with the Ontario Conference. They rented a conference room in a local hotel in Scarborough, a suburb of Toronto, and began meeting once a month. This gathering came to be known as Hope Vision Fellowship and was designed to welcome the blind community. Momentum built over the years and they formed a core group with new visitors coming through the doors regularly. There's a lot of hopelessness throughout the blind community. I like the name of our church, Hope Vision Fellowship. And that's basically what we are. We hope and we do have a vision. And our vision is to see blind people get saved. And if the blind people come to know Jesus Christ and find healing and hope through His wonderful grace. In 2016, Global Mission helped support this group and that same year, Hope Vision Fellowship was recognized as the first Adventist church for the visually impaired in the North American division. Since then, they've started meeting in their own church building, opening the door for more possibilities. Members like Kevin and Nina are actively involved in sharing Jesus' love with the blind community. There are a lot of blind people that really need this hope and they need, they need this nice time away from their stuff that they deal with every day and they need sort of a, a slight refuge. And that's my heart where I want to make people help them feel that way, like they matter. 
Most of the people who attend are not Adventist, but come because they feel safe here. They come from different religions and socioeconomic backgrounds. This congregation is not just focused on meeting the spiritual needs of its community. They also are aware of the physical needs. Pat, one of the founding members, makes sure that people are well taken care of by creating food care packages for people to take home. As most of them can't afford some of the basic necessities of life, let alone a little bit extra. And some of them have to rely on food banks anyway. So this is one of our reaches as well. I mean, this is sometimes the only way of getting their food. Knowing some of the stories of, of some of the ones going to actual food banks, um, they get pushed to the back, they can't see, they don't know what they are. And the one time I was helping a girl um, clean out her cupboard and she had 25 cans of expired spaghetti sauce and no spaghetti. So this is just helping. Thanks to your prayers and contribution to Global Mission, churches like this are planted in new areas and among unreached people groups. I want to thank God from the bottom of my heart for the Adventist Church. It was through the Adventist Church that I found Jesus. It was through the Adventist Church that I experienced His love. And it's through the Adventist Church's help and to the man that I am today. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. Yeah, I'm Mr. J Church and happy Sabbath. Before I pray, I would like to share the word of God. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. There are many times as a youth, we have our hearts astray. Whether we're struggling with emotional and mental issues, family issues, school, friendships, relationships, <laughs> we often find that people underestimate our emotional baggage just because we're young. We are currently facing our own fights as a generation of COVID-19. This is the time where we should look to God and seek for his guidance. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. I hope my prayer receives you well and helps you rebuild your own connection with God. Let's bow our heads and pray. <clears throat> Father, Lord in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day as we have been blessed by the words of your children. We come to you today as a youth and a generation in seek of your leading. Father, Lord, we humble ourselves as we follow your guidance as, as you said. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I'll console you with an open eye upon you. Lord, you know the challenges and decisions we face. I pray against the temptation to sin. Help us crave your presence more than we crave sin. May you open the gates of heaven and pour your prime blessings upon us. Heavenly Father, I pray asking in your name, according to your promises and providence, that you keep us in the hollow of your hand and meet each and every family according to their needs. Be it pain, fear, sorrow, sadness, or even anger. May we rejoice in your name, for you are our Lord, our God. We thank you and claim according to your words, for you are a God of patience, wisdom, kindness, and provision. Father Lord, may you please guide us and put your hands on our hearts as we go out through our daily lives, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>